time to unbox. Sadly, we will not be needing that outrageous bayonet today. Um, this box was stapled. And we are on round two of trying to open this box because it was filled with about 18,000 packing peanuts, um, which I'm not complaining about. This package, unlike the last one, was packaged properly. Foam peanuts are a good source of packaging, but they're a pain in the butt. We'll skip all the, all the crazy parts of stabbing boxes and whatnot and just get to the guitar. So I'm sure you'll already know what this is based off of the, uh, the title of the video, but uh, if you don't know, you can obviously tell by now it's a Gibson. Well, maybe you can't because that's upside down. But, of course, another Beatles guitar. And this is one, um, arguably the most used Beatles instrument. And it's crazy that I, I have not ever owned one until this moment. So, quite looking forward to this, but let's go ahead and open it up. Oh yeah. <laughs> Here she is, this is a custom shop reissue um, of a Gibson J160E. This particular one is a remake of a 1962 model finished in the VOS format. I'm gonna pick this baby up. Oh wow, really light, very, very light. Before we get to the guitar, we'll quickly take a peek at what is inside of the case. We have a warranty card, which has never been filled out. I purchased this used from somebody who, I actually don't know what the story was, but this guitar I believe was made in 2016, and it is basically brand new. So it comes with the warranty card, and then it comes with the original certificate of authenticity saying that it's a 62 J160E, a nice leather bound little thing there. And then we also have a limited edition hang tag. Um, I did not know that this was a limited edition guitar, but apparently it is, so that's cool. Um, I guess that would have just hung on one of the 200s or something in the shop. Um, and then lastly, we have a little bag of goodies. And let's see what's in here. So in this bag, we have a Gibson acoustic sticker, um, a pack of strings. These are 12s, which is generally what I use, light 12 to 53. Um, and these are bronze, which we'll talk about strings for a J160E in a moment. Um, I've never used Gibson strings. I'm sure they're fine, but I prefer Diodario and that's what I'll be using. Um, a guitar pick and actually a really nice leather bound key ring. Um, and this just looks like it's uh, like ads for all the stuff Gibson makes. Um, Gibson gear, genuine Gibson gear. So that's pretty cool, I guess. So yeah, there's all the fun stuff you get with a new Gibson guitar or a new acoustic, at least from the custom shop. So that's pretty neat. Um, we will swiftly move on to the guitar now because I know that's what everyone is here for two hours later all right so we are back now a few hours later this guitar is so sweet as I was saying, we are back now a few hours later to take a look at this lovely instrument. The reason it has been a few hours is because, uh, first of all, I put new strings on it. I always recommend that when you get a new guitar or bass or whatever, violin even maybe, um, if it takes new strings, I would put new strings on it because you know the brand, so you know what quality they are or are not. And you also know the gauge and you know composite, so you know if it's nickel, if it's bronze, 8020, whatever it may be, a jazz string, an NYXL, stuff like that. The Beatles often use electric guitar strings um, on their J160Es. And although I'll talk a lot more about the strings you should and should not use in the full review video of this guitar, I will let you know now that it is always recommended to use a nickel string on a J160E because of the P90 pickups. Now back to the guitar itself, as I mentioned earlier, this is a 1962 Gibson J160E reissue from the custom shop. This particular example was part of a limited edition run that was made in the fall and winter of 2016. And this specific guitar is finished in a three-tone sunburst, also known as a tri-burst. Um, and I will say that the camera is kind of picking up the red a little more than it shows in person. 
Um, you know, you can kind of see, especially there, it really picks up the red. But in person, it really blends nicely uh, and it looks beautiful. Finished in the VOS format, I'll talk about that in a moment. You can see the back and sides are a nice walnut stain. Um, and we'll go ahead and talk about the VOS finish now because I'm noticing this light here and you can see that in the reflection of the guitar, um, the light is kind of dispersed. And although this guitar is not a matte finish and is not a satin finish, it is almost like a brushed gloss, if that makes any sort of sense whatsoever. It is a nitrocellulose lacquer still, uh, as it should be, but it is kind of, it's just it's kind of hard to explain, but it's basically a slightly subdued or slightly worn, I think is what it said online, um, finish. And that's part of that VOS format. And the VOS format is vintage original spec from Gibson. What that means is they basically make a reissue of a particular model, generally over a particular year, and they make it as close as they can, as close as they kind of want to, to the original guitar. I don't know if they use correct hide glues on this particular guitar and stuff like that. Uh, but the neck profile is accurate. The way the wiring is done is accurate. The, the pin to bridge is accurate. All the woods are the laminated top with the thick binding um, on the inside or bracing excuse me, um, is accurate to the to the era, to 1962. And I, as I mentioned, binding a moment ago, you might notice, especially with my white shirt here, that the binding is kind of a cream ivory. It's just slightly yellowed, um, which I really like. It kind of takes the newness away just a little bit from the guitar um, and makes it look kind of old, even though it is still mint. Um, it just makes it look a little aged. And, and that's why I really like the VOS uh, format, that and it also you know recreates the guitar exactly as it was um, in the 60s or 50s or whatever the reissue year may be. All right, let's get to it. <laughs> So there you have it, a few sounds from the J160E. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you want to see more content on the J160E, let me know in the comment box below. I will definitely be doing some covers with this guitar, and I'm gonna be doing a full video review on the J160E within the next month or two. So make sure you are subscribed, stick around, and turn that notification bell on so that way you get notified whenever I post new content. As always, please don't forget to like the video, share the video, and of course, subscribe for more Beatles and guitar-related videos just like this. Stay class, everyone, and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.